Hello and welcome! My name is Jocelyn and today we have the finale for my Harry Potter project pan. This project pan of course was started by Christina Chang and she tagged me to start this project when she started this project and she created this project also, should mention that. So huge thank you to her for involving me in this project pan. It's been really great. It is definitely bittersweet. Bitter because I've enjoyed this project pan so much but sweet because now instead of four project pans I will be doing three project pans. That'll be kind of nice. Uh, there was a little bit of a time there when I was actually doing five project pans, recently dropped down to four, and now I'm going to be dropping down to three. I feel pretty good about my finale here today, and I hope that you enjoy. Once you're finished watching my video, definitely go and look for Christina's finale video. Both should be going up July 31st. Harry Potter's birthday. I will link her channel down below so you can go check it out. I'm almost positive there's a handful of other people who were involved in this project whose finale videos should be going up pretty close to when ours are going up. So definitely go ahead and search for those if you'd like to see more finales. So we do have a total of seven items that we were project panning in this project pan, each with a different concept behind it. So Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into product number one. Alright, so our first concept was which would you choose, Slytherin or Gryffindor? I chose Slytherin. And for this concept, I chose to pan, use up all of the sheet masks that I had in my bathroom because they're a thing that I typically neglect even though I love using them. So when I started this project, I had one, two, three, four, five, six sheet masks that I wanted to use up. The only one that I hadn't used up or there's two that I hadn't used up by the last update. It was this eye sheet mask from Sephora. This is the pearl eye mask, perfecting and brightening, and also the Soap and Glory Bright and Beautiful Radiance Boosting Mask. I didn't really like either one of these very much. Um, the Soap and Glory one was a gift from my friend Paige, and although I was very grateful and I liked using it and trying it out, I definitely wouldn't repurchase. I didn't find that it did anything for me. As a matter of fact, I did get some breakouts on my forehead, which I hadn't, like my skin had been pretty clear before using this, and I think that maybe this might have caused it, but who knows. So, used both of these up. All of them are now used up, which feels really good. All of them, I think, well, I think that this is cruelty-free, the Soap and Glory. I'm not totally sure if Soap and Glory is cruelty-free, but I'm, I'm pretty positive that it is, but I wouldn't repurchase it anyways. All of the rest of them are not cruelty-free, except this pharmacy one, and this was actually my favorite one, which is great. This was the Hydrating Coconut Gel Mask with Echinacea Green Envy for brightening. It has activated by anti-enzyme rich purple broccoli extract in it. I know that Pharmacy, I think, has this mask and another sheet mask, so I'd like to get another one of these at some point and try the other one because I really liked it. Just so you know, the other ones I had that I used was the Dr. Jart Brightening Infusion Hydrogel Mask. I think this one was okay, but Dr. Jart is not cruelty-free. And then I also had two other Sephora sheet masks. I had the Quenching and Replenishing Aloe Vera mask. I liked this one, pretty good. And then the Green Tea Face Mask, Mattifying and Anti-Blemishing. This one, I didn't really notice a difference, so I wouldn't have repurchased, even if I could. But these are all used up, so I have successfully panned my first product. Product number two, an item that you pretend doesn't exist. I finished this one up a few updates ago. This was the Urban Decay D-Slick Makeup Setting Spray for oil control. I neglect setting sprays pretty bad. At least I did at the beginning of this project. Because of this project, I have reached for my setting sprays a lot more, and so I was able to use this one up. I even, over the last few months, used up another setting spray that wasn't a part of any project pan, so that was really exciting. But Used this up a while back, so that's two out of seven so far. Next we have, <laughs> next we have uh, product number three. You have the Grim. Choose an item others hate but you love, and for this item I chose the Too Faced Love Light Highlighter in Blinded by the Light. I used the crap out of this thing, and unfortunately I was not able to hit my goal. My goal was to hit pan on this item, and although I used, again, the crap out of it, I did not hit pan. So this is what my product looks like right now. So as you can see, I have a huge dip there in the center, which of course is the deepest part of the product. Don't know why I did that to myself, but I do have a ton of progress on this. I do have a really deep pan in there, but I did not hit pan as you can see. But if you see the intro snapshot, then you'll see that I did in fact 
have really good progress on this. So that's that's good. I feel good about that. It would have been really awesome to have hit pan, but I didn't make it happen. Even though I used the crap out of it, I really used this the majority of the time that I did my makeup. So I don't, I mean, if I would have used it every single day, then maybe I could have hit pan, but I used it probably six out of seven days of the week. So it is what it is. Next, we have an item to honor Cedric, and I chose to pan the ColourPop Crim Gel Liner in Dirty Talk. This one ugh, wasn't necessarily one that I hit my goal on, but it did break, and so my goal was to use half of it up. There is this much left, but as you can see, it is broken, so I can't really even use it. I'm probably just gonna end up decluttering this and throwing it away. I have a couple of these in my collection also, and I bought them a really long time ago, and holding onto eyeliners for that long makes me really uncomfortable just because it goes directly next to my eye. Eyeshadow I'm pretty fine with, but something like this, which is like more of a gel texture and goes right next to my eye, I don't think I want to hold on to it for any longer. And it's broken, so on top of that, I feel like I got good use out of this and I'm at a point where I feel good about my progress. So we're gonna go ahead and call this complete and that's the end of the story with that one. Item number five, an item that reminds you of Luna Lovegood. I decided to throw in a nail polish and my goal with this was to use it up. And as far as I'm concerned, I've done that. I used it until it was just a way too much of a pain to use. So this is the nail polish that I had chosen to pan. Uh, it is the Zoya nail polish in the shade Faye. It's a really beautiful nail polish. So as you can see, it's like a purple nail polish with a lot of gold glitter in there. It's a really, really beautiful shade. But I, well here, you can kind of see that's how much product I have left right there. And I, the last couple times I tried to use this on my nails, it was just super gloopy and really, really difficult to work with. And my nails just looked messy and just not good at all. And so I went ahead and called it. I'm sure there's probably something I could put in here to liven it up a bit. But I have so many other nail polishes that I love in my collection that I just, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be bothered with that. I don't want to buy a whole nother product to fix the little bit that's left in here. I'd rather just toss it and then use some of the other ones that are in my collection. So as far as I'm concerned, this one is finished up. All right, product number six, Think Pygmy Puffs, an item you bought for the cute packaging. So the item I chose for this concept was the It's a Princess Thing palette from ColourPop and Disney, their collaboration. And I wanted to pan one shade in here. I decided to go with my favorite shade in this palette, which was the shade Ray. I managed to hit pan on the shade. This is the shade Ray right here. As you can see up in the corner right here, I have hit a bunch of side pan and bottom pan in this corner. Can you see it? Can you see it right there? So I successfully hit my goal and I was able to get, not get rid of, but use up a lot of product just in this pan in general, just kind of on the slope down to that pan. I also got a lot of use out of all of these matte shades up here, some of this shade right here, and then a bunch of the Beast down here. I used a lot of those shades over and over again when I was using Ray, just cause I thought, I dip into the same palette for the same look and I really enjoyed that look. One of my favorite, other favorite shades in this palette is also Grumpy. This shade right here is, I don't know if you can tell that there's quite a dip in that shade. It became just kind of like the perfect transition shade for me. I loved it. So I successfully hit my goal on this one. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to, but I did hit my goal on this, I think about a week ago. So I feel pretty great about that because that shade was pretty full when I started this project. And finally, your Always product, which is one of your most loved items. And I decided to go with a blush. This is the Tarte Blush in the shade Party. And my goal with this was just to hit pan. And as you can see, I had done that. I actually completed this oh, a few months ago, maybe a couple months ago. So this has had pan in it for a while and I'm very excited to say that I, com I completed, I, I want to say six out of seven of my items. The only one that I really didn't hit my goal on was this one right here, but I made a lot of progress on that one. There were these two, the nail polish and the eyeliner that I I'm kind of decluttering because of just the state that they're in, whether that's because there's not enough product left in them the nail polish or because they're very old and broken, the eyeliner. But I still feel really good about this project and felt like I got really good use out of things, got a really good feel for the things that are in my collection. So yeah, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty successful in this project, which is good, which is nice.
If you like Project Pans, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I also have, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, lots of other Project Pans on my channel, so if you would like to check them out, feel free to do so. Also, don't forget to go check out Christina's video. I will have her channel linked down below, so you can go check it out. And I think that is everything I have for you today. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe for more content from me, don't forget to do so before you go. All buttons are down below. And I think that's everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.